Hey folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome to Let's Try Rogue Book. Rogue Book is an upcoming new roguelike deck building game with RPG elements. There'll be some things in here that are familiar to us uh, from other games we play on the channel, but with a lot of new twists and some new mechanics thrown in here. I'm really, really excited for this one. Uh, check the description box down below. There will be information there as to where you'll be able to pick up a free demo copy of this, as well as the release date for this game, which is going to be in June. For Hey there, this is Quill from the future. Just want to clarify a couple of things. By the time this video goes live, you should be able to download the free demo for Rogue Book uh, if you want to give the game a try. Not only that, if you pre-order Rogue Book, then your version of the demo will be upgraded to remove an item called a Doom Coin, which means you will be able to uh, progress forward in, in the demo if you do the pre-order. So check out the links down below for more information, including uh, they're giving away a Rogue Book custom Switch, a Nintendo Switch. Uh, the developers of this game are um, Abraham Entertainment. They also developed a, a Fyra as well as a, this is co-designed by Richard Garfield, the creator of the Magic of the Catherine, and actually quite a lot of things. Uh, Richard Garfield does a lot of cool stuff. Um, so anyway, there's going to be some more info down below. Let's go ahead and just play the game. So I've only been playing it for a few hours today so far, just a little bit to try to get the basics. It is absolutely gorgeous. And what's interesting is, um, as opposed to some of these other sort of deck building roguelike games, uh, you're going to be playing on this hex map. Now, this first area is just where you're going to be choosing a companion because you're actually going to be playing with two different characters as part of your deck. Now, in this demo that I'm playing here, we only have access to two characters. We've got Shara, the Dragon Slayer, and we're going to be picking up our buddy over here, Sirocco, the first mate so those are the only options available in this um in this demo but there will be more later on so we're going to pop through the gate and get started on this and what's very lovely here is so we can explore this world um to find our way to the boss so like other games you know we're ultimately trying to get to this final boss over here and and defeat him and go through some of the various chapters and we've got various encounters but we have a lot of flexibility in how we encounter them so we've got a merchant here where we can purchase goods i mean we can take a peek at him um and then we can buy things now we've got 100 gold maybe we'll wait we'll come back when we've got a few more bucks let's say so we leave the shop he's still going to be there so we can go back which is great over here we get the vault of wisdom it allows us to pay 40 gold to draft a card we'll be i think given three cards to choose from we can pick one and then we've got a battle over here but we've also got the ability to real terrain we've got a brush here it's very much you know rogue book book right sort of storytelling kind of vibe we've got a brush we can reveal paper tiles around us and that means we can go around fights we may also um find some extra valuable stuff we've also got a tower over here if we can get to it it'll pop and reveal a ton more terrain which is going to be nice let's take the vault of wisdom first and we'll go ahead and draft a card now the cards in your deck will belong to your two different heroes over here so the ones with the red background these belong to sirocco and the golden cards or, or sorry silver cards over here belong to shara herself and that does make a difference as we'll see when we get in there sirocco is fairly tanky shara is fairly attacky uh kickflip sounds like a pretty fun idea actually it's a big attack for 15 um it can only be played when she is leading we'll see what that means in a second and then put her back you know what i've never actually played with kickflip i'm gonna grab it this time just because it'll be new to me and and I think there's no reason why I can't just go ahead and pop this normal fight. So let's go ahead and do that first and see what we can do over here in Roguebook. All right, first fight is going to be against a trio of yaks. Um, we've got symbols letting us know what the enemy is intending to do. So a couple of them are going to attack. This one here is going to buff in some way. We don't know what buff that is as you know, it's going to be pretty consistent with the yaks themselves. So as you gain experience playing this, you'll know what to expect. But I'm still kind of new and I actually don't know what's going to come up here now. So currently, Shara, who's my lead character for this particular run, is in front. She's going to start every battle in front. And when she is in the lead, she gains three power. So she hits for three extra damage. That's what the little flaming thing is over here. So, for example, Strike would normally hit for six. But because Shara is at the front of the party, it's going to hit for nine. When Sirocco is in the front of the party, at the end of the turn, Sirocco will gain two block. Now, what's interesting about block is block is always just applied to whoever is in the front over here. And the person in the front is the person who's going to be getting hit as well. Um, so, um, and some of the cards will move you. So this little symbol over here 
uh, I can't actually point to it, but you see how the one has, is surrounded by the, the double arrows? This is letting us know that if I play this card, Sirocco is going to move to the front of the party. That's what that symbol represents over there. Um, the defend cards tend to have that, uh, and a few of the other cards will on occasion have that. So Sirocco can attack from the back, that's perfectly fine. Um, let's see what we want to do with this turn. There's 10 damage incoming, it would be nice to take 0. Uh, guard will block 7, Sirocco if he's in the front will get a 2 block for free as well. So what I propose is this, we'll go ahead and strike. Um, how much can we do? We can hit for a total of 15 this turn. So let's attack the yak in the back. Let's strike here as well. So I'm striking with Sirocco here, so I'm not getting the plus three power. That's going to be okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to guard. It's going to put Sirocco in the front um, because I played the guard. And the reason I wanted Sirocco in the front is it's because it's going to give him two extra block over here. Now, I don't actually need it anymore because I'm only taking five damage, but I wanted to be able to demonstrate that. So there you go. He gets two extra block. It's not going to take any damage here. This Yak buffed himself. He's got two extra power, so he's going to be hitting that much harder. Maybe this becomes our priority to get some kills. Um, here, Shara has got Lunge here. Lunge has got Charge, which means it's going to um, move her to the front. So this attack won't actually do 8, it will actually do 11, because it's going to move her to the front first and then attack. Um, we can... Actually, we can wipe the board here with some fun maneuvers. Let's go ahead and uh, lunge, hitting this guy. Bam, for 11. We're going to strike him, finishing him off, and then we're going to kick flip to attack for 18. It's also going to move it back. Ah! Okay, it did do the 18. I was going to say, I don't know. I, I have to double check the text. I think it re retreats her after the attack. So she still has the plus three power for the attack itself. Anyway, nice clean fight. No damage taken. Really nice. We get some gold. Excellent. We can spend that in the shop. We also get a bottle of ink. So these normal fights give us these ink bottles. And these ink bottles are used to reveal more tiles. So reveals three spaces in opposite directions. What the heck does this mean? Well, if I go and stand, say, over here, and I use the ink... You can see it reveals three spaces in a couple of different directions here. So what I think I'm going to do, um, move to, if I do this, I can ink to here. There, excellent. That'll be, that'll be great. So I'll use this, ink this way. It might be revealing some pointless tiles back here. Yeah, these trees are impassable terrain, but this worked out well because I can walk all the way here. I can hit my paintbrush, bam. To reveal, I found a golden fairy. Deal extra damage to the fairy in exchange for gold. I didn't read the entire tooltip there. Ooh, there's also another sky tower. Let me pop this sky tower here. Ooh, reveal random terrain. Let's do that. way over here. There's also a couple of powerful items on the map right now that we would like to prioritize getting to if we can. A little more gold. Okay. Deal damage to the fairy in exchange for gold. Pinata. Earn gold equal to the damage dealt to the fairy. Defeating the fairy rewards a bonus 50. Ah, it's going to be asleep for three turns and then probably disappear. This is my first time running into this. This is really cool. It reminds me of like um, uh, the... Uh, gold goblins or gremlins, I don't remember what they're called, in like Diablo, for example, or the uh, Tormented Spirits in Path of Exile, which, <laughs> completely different kind of genre game, but it's a great little format. So we want to do as much damage as possible here. So we're going to start off with, um, we will lunge, because it'll do the 11. I'll kick flip, because it does 18, which is pretty good. We'll want to be, we'll hopefully be moving forward in the next fight so we can get the power over there, but we're trying to front load as much damage as possible. Go ahead and strike. And that is the end of our first turn. Now what can we do? I think what we want to do here, because we can strike for six, and then, like, Sirocco can strike for six, and then Shara can strike from the back for six each. But we're still going to be in the back with Shara. It'd be great to be in the front so we get our power. And here's the thing. If I defend here, now this is going to be one action. By the way, we have three uh, three energy to use our spells here. Um, I spent one of our energy doing a block, which we don't need. Moves us forward. But we do get the three power. So now our strike, the six damage that we're not getting from this strike, we're getting from our power. So this turns out to do as much damage on this turn and then sets us up for potentially a bigger turn next time over here. How, how gorgeous is the artwork in this game? Huh? Just absolutely beautiful. Hopefully we can pick up some big attack cards for Shara. Okay, that's not bad at all, because we can lunge. 
We're not going to kill him. We're not going to get the bonus 50 gold, unfortunately. There may have been a way to do it. Maybe, you know what? In hindsight, I should have left this fairy until I got a little bit of extra power. Because unlike, say, okay, the names are names, right? Unlike, say, Slay the P P Spire or Monster Train, we really get to choose the order. Oh, he's not gone yet. He's just going to, okay, now he's going to run away. I didn't realize we had one extra turn. Oh, brilliant. Beautiful. Perfect. But yeah, unlike some of the other sort of uh, deck building roguelikes, we get to choose the order that we explore the map here. Um, so we could have encountered that fairy when we had more power. Um, let's go ahead and... Actually, let me go to the shop first. Again, because I don't remember what was here. Let's figure out what we might want to buy. So we can buy some more cards. There's eye for an eye. This is a golden border. I'm assuming it means it's rare. All damage dealt to Shara next turn is also de dealt to her attackers. Wow. And gives her courage. So courage uh, generates extra energy. You lose one stack per turn. Um, but it's, you know, so for a while, while she's got courage, she's going to be attacking faster. Quick strike costs no energy. Duel charge and attacks only the leading enemy specifically for 12. Although for Shara, that's always going to be 15 because this is always going to put her up front. We've got some cards for Soraka over here. Wild Swing. Discard your hand. Attack for zero. Oh, six times num the number of cards discarded. Okay. So you, you play Wild Swing, you discard everything else, and you do six times that amount of damage. You'll see it's also got these little circles over here. These are these kind of runes or crystals that we can slot into these cards. Wow. Gain eight energy. Dissolve every card you play this turn. So yeah, dissolve means that once you play that card, it's out of your deck for the rest of the battle. So, huh. Balloonfish. Ally. Oh, so it summons an ally. And then activate, swap the heroes, and draw a card. Or you can buy these things. Dang. Fire gets cool, so it makes a spell ranged. Ranged spells cost one less when you play them from the back. Um, this would be a, a decent one potentially to add to like a lunge or something. Because you'll you'll lunge for free and then it moves you forward for everything else. I don't know. Uh, Shard Cluster adds a little bit of splash damage to your attack. It does its normal attack and then um, attacks all enemies for two. Resident Moonstone. This is actually a lot of fun. When you play this card, you add another copy of that card to your hand. Although that card doesn't have a gem. Um, it, imagine how nice this is on Quick Strike. We play Quick Strike for free. It adds a copy of Quick Strike to our hand, which we play again for free. Um, both those cards stay in your deck as well. So they go in your discard pile, like just for the combat. They go in your discard pile. When you draw it again, you'll have another. You'll have. You'll still have the copy of Quick Strike without a gem, so it just pays for and does nothing. But then you'll have another version of the the one that makes duplicates. So you start multiplying the number of Quick Strikes, uh, and none of those things cost um, cost energy. The only thing we can get items. Whenever you play a ranged card, deal five damage to all enemies. Uh, that could be nice if we could buy this and maybe the fiery agate, and then start drafting more ranged cards. Lance. So the start of the paddle, the very first turn, our hero that's got this would have an extra three power. We could probably throw that in the Shara, make her opening turn even more deadly. Couple fetish. Whenever the equipped hero kills an enemy, gain ten gold. Man, this is all really cool. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy Quick Strike, and I'm going to buy the Resonant Moonstone, just so I can show you crafting. Is that the was it the strongest purchase? I don't know. I'm too new to the game still. What we're going to do is we're going to grab Quick Strike. So we've selected it. I'm going to select the Resonant Moonstone, and I'm going to craft this card. Bam. Quick Strike only has one slot. Some things have multiple slots. Okay, so we've got this. Let's go and do some fighting. We'll do a normal fight over here. Well, I guess I could have gone in for the draft. You know what? I probably should have drafted and then gone and bought and maybe equipped the crystals. But again, for demonstrative purposes, it's kind of nice. Okay, perfect. We're going to quick strike. That's going to put another copy of quick strike in my hand. <laughs> uh, ooh, that was a, that was an evil laugh. Um, trying to figure out the most efficient way to deal the damage here. I think what we're going to do is do that plus this strike. And you can attack people in the front and the back, it's fine. The enemies will attack you, uh, the front unit. Some enemies will do splash damage and things. I think we should be able to finish this guy off. Yep, before he kills us. Oh man, more flawless combat. Damage does persist between battles as well. If you get hurt in a combat, it's going to stick around. Imperial Ink is like the last ink bottle, but even better. Alright, let's draft here. See what we can add. Um, Warcry. Now see, it might have been nice to duplicate this. Both heroes gain two power until the end of the turn is kind of nice. Spirit Spice is free. Draw two cards and put two cards on top of your deck. Impact. Attack an enemy for 12 and adjacent enemies for 6. That's big. It's one energy for tons of damage and splash. Let's get impact. Sounds like fun. Okay, we're going to do a... Oh, shoot. Was this an elite fight? I think it's an elite fight. 
cowardly. When this takes damage, lose two power this turn. It's going to attack. We don't have any attacks for Shara, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, okay, it is definitely going to do less damage here. Um, I think I will go and do a guard. We're going to hope we, we pick up our lunge here, or the prep. So we're going to take three damage. Keep wailing on him, but the quick strike is going to be amazing for this deck. Okay, so first, what I want to do is I want to lunge because I want to put Shara in front again, and then I want a quick strike. I want to regular strike, um, quick strike again, and I guess I'll kick flip to do the most damage. It'll put her behind again, which is too bad because I'd like her up front for more damage, but I think it makes the most sense. <gasps> Oh, no, I didn't notice that Sirocco was vulnerable. I just noticed the damage go up here, and we're like, wait, why is he doing more damage all of a sudden? We put him back up front, and he's vulnerable. I did not notice that he got a debuff before. Whoops. All right, he's just going to armor up this turn. Impact. What's in our draw pile left? I wonder what the odds are that we'll get our lunge to put Shara back in front next con next round. I don't know. I think what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to defend and do a normal strike. We're going to leave her up front, and we'll hope that we can get a killing blow. I just don't know how much... A 20? Uh-oh. And this isn't actually going to sap his damn... Oh, no! Well, it's a multi-strike. We really do have to deal damage to him to reduce this. Oh, that's still going to be a lot of damage. Oh, no! Queen's Assassin. I've never fought her. Alright, we should have the kill here. Because we've got the Quick Strike that puts another Quick st Strike in our hand. Yeah, we, can just do this. we took a bunch of damage, though, and that was, that was a rough fight. I don't think I realized it was an elite, but it definitely was. We're getting enough to charge from our paintbrush. Uh, these paper contracts let us um, um, unlock more things going forward for our character. Lava Shield Rare. Whenever the an enemy attacks the equipped hero, they take three damage. Well, we're going to put it on Sirocco because really we want him to be in the front whenever possible. Hopefully we can get a heart here um, because we could really use a heal up. Yeah, I'll go ahead and draft some more. We get another quick strike. I don't know if we need another one. Daggers, um, these are more cards that are cheap. They're free. So we have this attacks for seven, and then a dagger, um, I think is a zero casting cost attack that just consumes itself after use. Give a hero three power. It's really expensive. Oh, but I think this is permanent. Okay, let's grab that. And a talent here has been unlocked. Excellent. So what we can get? Shara, Hidden Blade. She can start each battle three daggers. Sirocco's got Stone Skin. He gets plus one max life for each card in your deck. Or we can boost the party. The start of each turn, gain six block. This ends once you shuffle your deck. That's a lot of daggers. And the daggers are retained. Shara could hold on to her daggers until we pick up the Fire Oil. On the other hand, I think this is really good. It's going to last... Um, Let's see, 14 cards in her deck. And we can keep adding cards, might be very good. Tell you what, let's get Hidden Blades. Let's just commit to attack, attack, attack. What could possibly go wrong there? We can do a transform here. Uh, we don't have enough money for that right now, unfortunately. So we can't do that. But I can still walk through this. We can't really do it with attacks. Um, I don't want to pop this thing yet. What I'm going to do is use my Imperial Ink. Like this. Uh, okay, it's a normal battle, because I want to use an ink brush as far forward as possible. Let's we'll see if we can get the Rune Medallion. Whenever you, you play an ally... Oh! That's not going to be very useful for us. We don't actually have ally cards. Should have noticed that. What's uh, what's this item? Yeah, let me come back to the tooltip. Knight's Palter. First time each battle, the other hero would take lethal damage, swap heroes, and gain 12 blocks. That sounds a little more useful for us. Okay, let's paint brush. Grab that. Yeah, stack of pages. Unlock perks between runs is very nice. I guess I'll pop over here because we can do another bonus reveal. 
We hope it gives us something efficient. Oh, that's actually fairly helpful. Three more paintbrushes. I think this is a normal battle. Okay, I'm going to do the normal battle here. we got to be a little careful because we're getting a bit low on health. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's try to kill an attacker. This one does more, but this one's looking to debuff. How much can we do? Um, well, quite a bit if we're going to kickflip. Alright, so that's 15, 24, which would be enough to kill him. And with the kick flick, we could kill him instead. Debuff is scary, but... I think what I'm going to do... Now I'm going to kick flip away, and then, I mean, I could put her back. She's low on health, there's seven incoming, but I would only really take two. But I also don't want her to get debuffed, because if it's a damage debuff, it'll be really annoying. And he's going to take exactly zero damage, which is a gorgeous thing. There you go, weak. Perfect. So he's going to deal less damage, but that's okay, because it's not his job to deal damage. As I say, the nice thing will be if I pick up a lunge. Now, slight difficulty here. This one is bubbled, so that the first attack just gets negated over here, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But we can pop it pretty easily. I think... Um, I don't know if the order matters. We have to wait, waste one attack on this guy regardless. So we may as well... I guess, yeah, it doesn't matter. Let me, um, lunge here. Uh, so we'll burn that. And then we'll quick strike here to finish you off. Um, oh, I could have used impact probably to be much more efficient. Oh, no. I am bad. I was missing the fact that impact was there and is, like, really good for splash because it probably could have popped that shield in a really, really good way. All right, so we're going to leave Shara up front to take the damage. Hopefully we can just do lethal next turn. There's that fire oil, finally. Um, well, I think what's going to happen... We'll demonstrate that the block stays. I'm going to do this. Put him in front, but you see he, he all the block still applies over there. So it doesn't matter who plays the block card, with the exception that the block card moves you to the front. So you're going to want to pay a little attention to that. Uh, so we can just finish off. Okay. Boop. Lovely. Okay. Not maybe as clean as we would have liked. We'll have to do... Alright, five spaces in a straight line. That seems really handy. What I'll do is... I'll go something like this. Bam. Oh, it's all clear. Sometimes things are blocked. So Knight's Pauldron. First time the other hero would take lethal swap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to throw it on Sirocco. So if Shara gets lethal damage, he's going to swap in front and protect her. We'll pop this as well. Mm, only a gold pile. There's going to be an elite fight before the boss. We have enough to do a card transform. Let's do it. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll transform one of Shara's defends. Because a lot of times we won't want to play this to move her to the front. We're going to replace it with... The smoke block bomb's interesting. Because it'll generate a bunch of block and then retreat her. Keeping in mind the block stays on the person in front. Adrenaline Rush is a ranged attack. So it's cheaper if played from the back. Gives us one energy. So from the back it's free and just nets us one energy. The dual charge attack the leading enemy. We've got Keen Aquamarine which also draws a card. Which might be nice on Adrenaline Rush. Uh, add this card to your hand at the start of the game. Or just gain more block. Because what we're going to get to do here. Tell you what, let's do this is we get to, um, we, we burn our old defend, we get a card, and we give it a crystal right away. So this is going to be a great card to use from uh, from behind. Okay, I'll pop this normal battle, we'll fight it, I'll use the paintbrush, and we'll go there. And then, uh, I don't want this video to be too long, so we might go to the boss, but I'll we've got lots of opportunity to do tons of... Uh, Tons of exploration if we manage our ink and our brushes. Okay, these guys are not attacking right away, which is nice. They do attack for a lot, but we've got a time to buff. So we're going to fire oil Shara. So that's going to permanently give her the extra power, which I think is going to be useful. And you see these daggers have retain. So, like, once I use them, they're gone. But they don't get re discarded. So I can, I could 
in some matches, hold on to these daggers until we get the firewall. But we've got them now. I don't think there's any reason not to start unloading on this guy over here. Um, and we'll do this. We're going to leave Char up front for the next round. Hopefully she can finish this guy off and then she might have to retreat. Oh, are they just sleeping again? Interesting. I don't really know what these guys do, but... All right. Um... Too bad it's not 13. We're just one shy of one-shotting that guy. Although, we can kill him with a kickflip, which might be the way to do it. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to apply a bunch of damage, although the kickflip does so much. I guess either way, we kill someone with the kickflip. I mean, whether or not we block here doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, he does hit for a lot of damage. Oh, but there's our adrenaline rush. Look, this is going to be so great, because we play this for free. It gives us one energy and draws a card. That's really, really, really nice. And then we, we even set up for, like, a crazy cool combo where we lunge, strike, quick strike, quick strike again, kick flip. Not of it, none of it's going to matter, because we're just going to kill him the first attack. But damn! Shara is a death machine. All right, Inkwell reveals three spaces in a straight line. I think we'll actually use it here. Oh, in inverted lines. Um... Hmm. No, I think... Well, okay, hold on, actually. Let me brush. This makes the most sense. Yeah, we'll draft a card. Crisscross. Attack for five damage twice. Gain two courage, which will give us more energy. We can get another fire oil. Huh. Now, the more power we have, the better Cross Strike does. I think I called it Crisscross. Um, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. All right, let's grab this because it's, it's something we don't have. We'll pop the Sky Tower. Reveal big piles of gold. Oh, and a random reveal of a terrain somewhere. Might show us interesting loot. Might also path us somewhere. Yeah, just a little bit more gold. I think it's, it's guaranteed to center on something interesting. I mean, whether or not the, you know, the little pile of gold is that, you know, interesting, we'll see. I guess, I think I could still even return to the shop, but I don't actually have that much cash. Is this the alchemist for transmute? Yeah, we don't have 150 gold. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to waste the Basque cord effect, but that's going to be okay. I'm going to do this. Darn! This tree! I guess this thing is not even... We don't even play allies. I guess it wasn't that big of a deal, is it? All right, let's use one more just random ink brush. Ah, we get nothing out of it. Boo! Boo! All right. Well, we're pretty hurt. Let's go into this elite fight and see how it goes. It would not surprise me if I just lost here. Again, still fairly new to the game. Still trying to learn some of these combos. Okay. Well, what we're going to do... I'm going to play Fire Oil and Guard. Yeah. I'm going to Fire Oil you. Um, I can... Quick Strike. No! I grabbed the wrong card there. Because I wanted to Guard, put her in the back, then play, um, then play Adrenaline Rush when she was in the back. Uh, don't, don't strike, so I can't strike now. Um, that's unfortunate, because we would have been able to play one more card. Because doing the, um, what is it called again? Adrenaline Rush from the back would have net us one extra energy. We would have been able to apply a little bit more damage to the Elite. Oh, that is, that is really unfortunate. But I wanted him up front, because he was going to get the extra two armor, plus he's got actual hit points. He is vulnerable. 50% more damage for the rest of the battle. Okay. I want her up front before we crisscross. We've got no ability to manipulate anything over here, though. This is, um... Well... I guess we crisscross anyway, because the Courage is still going to be useful. And she still has plus three power. Oh, so actually, I should have used this... Oh, no, that was the impact one. That, that's probably fine. Okay, he's going to attack and defend. Okay, we're going to lunge forward. Um... He 
still going to take five because he's vulnerable. Oh, three, actually. Thirty. Okay, well, I mean, this will kill him. Well, it'll kill either one. It's probably only 15, but it would still kill her. But I think I can just finish him off, right? Okay. Woo! Well, that's great, but we're going to go into the boss with virtually nothing. Although, this gives us a, another um, another paintbrush whenever you kill an elite. The end of each turn, retain a random card. Oh, okay. And then the book, and then some money, and then the extra paintbrush. Um, let's... Where are we going to use the paintbrush? We want to reveal as much as possible with it. I guess here, probably. Darn. Nothing else. Alright, let's go die to the boss. Because I'm sure that's what's going to happen. Alright, what are you? Front bearer. After the front bearer takes 25 damage, the Tiki Palakwin becomes weak. Ah. Back bearer becomes vulnerable. Oh my god, so they have tons of hit points. But I don't think we're going to kill the front or the back. I think what we're looking to do is do 25 to each so that we add vulnerability over there. All three parts of the Tiki are one creature. Sh oh, they share their HP total. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Well then. Annoyingly... She's not going to die, because we have the Lava Shield. Uh, sorry, we have the Knight's Pauldron. So, we're just going to play Adrenaline Rush, because it'll just cycle. It pays for itself, draws a new card to replace it. I think we've got to put down the Fire Oil when it comes up. And let's... Let's go for the... Um, I guess let's go for the vulnerable because it'll make it easy to beat up the other one. Now, does this apply over here too? No. Okay. Literally only the center one is vulnerable. Wait, for one turn? Oh! Well, never mind. That was stupid then. Did that wrong. I understood it wrong. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, all I had to do is read the words. So the swap, he'll shield up, he'll take that hit. Uh, she's still got the vulnerable, which is a little scary. But we can do some fun manipulation over here. Um... Right, so this one gets the debuff, but attacking... Wait, why did your damage go? Oh, because I'm vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to be moving back in a second. Um... This, which will now weaken you, so you'll do less damage. The impact's actually fairly efficient damage here. And adjacent enemy. So if I hit this, will it hit the other two? I think it will. He's gonna die. But he went down doing very efficient damage. We're just we're just lose here. I don't think I managed my hit points again. But here's the interesting thing. Your ally's not dead forever. In fact, um, oh, we can get the Knight's Pauldron back. That's interesting. What happens is when your ally dies, you get these revive songs in your deck. And when you sing it three times, your dead hero comes back to life. Not with a lot of hit points. Not with a lot of hit points, but they can come back. Um, the problem is here. We got these wounds here that are just dead cards. Uh, either way, we're just going to die here. Okay, no, if I weaken... There you go, 13. And what I can do is I can defend, so I won't take lethal. Means we didn't sing for Sirocco, unfortunately. Uh, now we're weak, so we'll do less damage, which will make it a lot harder to get a killing blow. Unless I can do something with the vulnerability. Do 19. He'd have 51 left that I would have to do there. I mean, could I even get that far? And I'm not. I think the answer might be no. We may as well adrenaline rush here, because at least it recycles itself. 
Again, I can res my buddy. I can do some weird things with the Knight's Pauldron. I don't know if there's an out here. I mean, hooray, you're vulnerable again. Kickflip's not going to move me. We got him low. There, there may have been a lethal in there. I'm like, that's fine. We got him awfully low. Game over. Might get some progression here. Nope, not enough to unlock any cards. But soon, we'll be unlocking some more, which will probably make our decks more powerful, which will give us a better run at that. Anyway, there's a quick look at Rogue Book. I think this is a fantastic game. It looks gorgeous. I think the gameplay is going to be solid. I mean, it gives us that gameplay that we love so much in some other games. But the, the map works so differently. The two hero combination where you swap back and forth in position, like having to manage your position is great. And then as a reminder, again, there's going to be a bunch of heroes, a bunch of champions that you can choose from um, when the game actually comes out. Right now, it's just Shara and uh, Sirocco, uh, but we'll be having some other buddies later on. And it's the sort of thing that you can easily expand to, right? Keep releasing new content and keep putting out some more of these heroes with their own card pools and things. Um, I'm very, very pumped for this. Can I go through? Ah, I need two heroes. Like, is there is there a solo hero option? I don't know. But there you go. And uh, when you start a run, you can, uh, you'll can you be able to continue it. Um, yeah, heroes over here. Including, like, I guess sort of neutral progression. Uh, back up. Where else was there here? Perk tree. Ooh. Wait. Oh, this is what I spend those papers on. Oh, choose an additional treasure from treasure chest. So there's going to be options now. What is this? Unlock an additional talent here. Oh, those talents are really strong too, but I don't know. Better treasure. Start the game with more gold. Choose from an additional gem from gen. I mean, oh, you need 10 pages for that. Okay, well, I guess it's pretty. Oh, and we need that. Okay, I could get rank one. I could. Interesting. Oh, I love the extra the extra progression over here. We could compendium with all the cards too that have been unlocked. What is this? Ally. So this summons an ally. And whenever the heroes swap, gain block equal to this ally's spirit. We're going to really have to do an ally deck at some point. Anyway, that is it. That is a quick look. That's our last try here of Rogue Book. Again, this was a sponsored video, but I think... You can probably expect there to be more of this uh, on the channel in the future, especially once the game does come out. Again, check the description box down below for all the information about release dates, uh, links to more information as well as you can pick it up, and all that kind of good stuff. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.